Hello, what is up guys? It's Evil Duo Sarm here today, back with another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the first steps of creating your very own 3D world for our 3D game. This is going to be the first part of like a multi-part on creating it since there's so much you have to do in the 3D world editing system. And I want to be able to show you all the different things you can do. Now, obviously this video is going to stop before everything is done. So feel free to continue playing around and messing around with the world. We're just going to get the general outline of what we're going to be working with as we move forward in the series. So if you want to add more trees or put different aspects all over the place, feel free to do that. Real quick, before we begin, if you're new to the channel, new to the series, or enjoying the different series on the channel, please consider subscribing. That way you stay updated, as well as it helps to grow the channel. Without further ado, let's get into it, and let's get started by creating our first map. So to do that, navigate to the content browser on the bottom left side of your screen, right-click, and click New Folder. This new folder we're going to call Maps, that way we know where we put all of our maps. The next thing you want to do is navigate to the File option in the top left corner, and you're going to click New Level. This is going to create a new level and we want to click the default level template. Hit save current in the top left corner and it's going to ask you where you want to save it. Navigate to the maps folder that we just created and call this one YouTube 3D. That way we don't forget what we're doing here. So after you end up in this level area, you're going to get this gray tile hit sitting here. You're going to have the sun, you're going to have the clouds, everything you could possibly want to get started with a level. But we don't care about any of that. What we're going to do is immediately add a landscape. So if you click the landscape option in the top left corner, you're going to see this icon that pops up all over. So it's the little mountain icon, and you're going to get this floor that sets up all around. By default, it's going to be set to 63 by 63. This is kind of like way too big for what we want to do. Obviously, if you're creating a massive world or a larger world, you're going to want to do this. But obviously, the more tiles that you add, the less performance you get in your overall game. So we're going to drop this to 31 by 31 quants, which is plenty for what we're trying to do here. Now the next thing you need to do is select a ground material or a base material for this floor. There's a bunch of different options you can do and we're going to show you those different options as we get further in the series. But the first one we're going to do is just make this all grass. So to do that in the browse option just type in grass and select the material ground grass that pops up right so you get it. So that's going to make this entire floor this grass based material. And now all we got to do is click create to make the floor. And as you can see it creates the gridded floor that has these grid marks and if you want to get rid of the grid marks from now you can do that by clicking this drop down by build and clicking build lighting only this is going to build the lighting for the level and get rid of the grid marks for the level now i wouldn't recommend doing this because we're going to start doing some floor editing which is just going to make us have to do this a second time but i do want to show you how it works so after the lighting is built it's going to pop up with this message log and then boom all of the grid tiles are gone and we have the grass floor for our level the next thing we need to do is navigate to the world settings on the right side here and for the game mode override we need to select the phase player base that we had before. Now move on into the middle of the map and you'll see the player start if you zoom all the way out and all the way back into the middle of the map that we just created. You're going to see the player start icon, go ahead and lift that so it's above the ground and then click play. And you'll see we now have our phase player character dropped into this grass fielded world. Hit escape to knock out of this. So now we have to deal with the age old question, how are we going to bound our map? You've got the GTA approach where you just put the whole thing on an island and surround it by water. That's one way to do it. You can do mountains around the edges or you can do invisible walls. My personal preference is like a mixture of the first two where you put like some barriers, some walls, as well as a water barrier on one side. So that's what we're going to do here for this video. So in order to sculpt the world, go ahead and click on the landscape icon once again, and it's going to bring up the sculpting tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to put mountains along like one ledge here around this side. Well, we're actually going to end up putting mountains all the way around the whole thing. But this side is going to be a water path that leads into a mountain. So it kind of makes it look like there's distance on the other side. But in reality, the player's perspective is kind of thrown by the water. Anyway, you'll see what it looks like here in a second. So the first thing you want to do is navigate to the tool strength option and bring it up to like 0.78. We want to circle brush with a smooth fall off. What this is going to do is it's going to start to lift up the edges and as you can see the grids come back as we uh, put in these different mountains so just go around the edges of the map and put in something that sort of looks like a mountain all right once you've got something like that set up the next thing we need to do is erode these mountains to make them look more like actual mountains so on the options over here for landscape editor click the sculpt tool and we're going to go ahead and click the erosion tool so you can either click the water erosion or the sun erosion and go ahead and hover over the mountains and sort of try and smooth them out Make them a little bit more uniform as you go across the different mountain peaks. That way it looks more like a mountain. So after you've gone around and smoothed things out, if you want to go ahead and click play just to see what your world looks like now, you can see we have some pretty imposing mountains that the player is definitely not going to be able to escape. The player can't also see like the edge of the world, like the flat world theory over there and fall off the edge. So we, we don't have to worry about that. So we can go ahead and escape out of this and then move on back into the level design. 
So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and erode like a pond in one of these corners so we have like a water element for our level. To do that, navigate and select the Sun Erosion tool. The Sun Erosion tool is more of a smooth erosion. And what you want to do is go to one of the corners, doesn't matter which one of the ones you have here, and we're just going to dig, like literally dig a hole in the mountain area. So we're just going to dig a ponded mountain hole thing. And that should be plenty enough for our little pond. So as you can see, now we have something with some depth. And if you wanted to add more depth across the map or created more variability, just adjust the tool strength so that it's weaker and you can create different designs. So now we need to get our water to fill into that hole. And to do that, we're going to navigate over to the content browser. From the content browser, navigate to the Paragon Props. And the Paragon Props, navigate to the Ground option. In the Ground option, you're going to have Meshes. And you're going to see SM Plane 5x5. So go ahead and click on SM Plane, but don't double click, and then press Control W on the keyboard. This is going to copy the SM Plane, and we're going to call this Water Plane. And you can call it Water Plane 1, but I need to call it Water Plane 2 because I already tried doing this once to make sure that it worked. Control Shift S to save everything, and let's navigate into Water Plane. Inside of Water Plane, all you want to do is select the Water Material on the right side. So you're going to have the Material Options on the right. Just type in Water on the right side, and you're going to have either the option for M Water Lake, or you can do M Water Ocean. Whichever one you want to do, they're both going to look about the same in game. I'm going to pick M Water Lake simply because this is more of a lake and it's going to have less disturbance. Let's go ahead and hit Control Shift S to save this and close this out. Next thing you need to do is click the top left where it says place in the top left of our screen in the top left option where it says place because we want to start placing things. Drag your water plane in and drop it in. So the next thing you need to do is you need to make this water plane large enough for the area that it's in. So first, get it to the right height so that it's like level with the ground. So you can see mine's a little bit high, so I'm going to bring it down. There we go. That's pretty much level with the ground there to the point where it'll like be protruding a little bit. Next thing we need to do is make this sucker huge. So you can either place a whole bunch of these, or if you're lazy like me, navigate to this tool option right here. So you've got the move around in the world, you've got the rotate, and then you have the scale. And we're just going to scale this thing to huge. And after we get it big enough, we're going to drag it and place it so that it fills in our little puddle. You can see we're a little bit low still, so let's bring it up, and that should be good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to rebuild the lighting. So once again, build lighting only, and this is going to get rid of all the grid lines and should make the level look a lot better. So go ahead and close out the warning sign, and if we hit play to drop into the level and look around, you can see that we have our little pond going on over here. The player's surrounded by mountains. There's still a good amount of land for the player to explore, and then we can put the rest of our game into. Obviously, if you wanted a bigger game world, you would have to create a bigger game world at the start but still pretty solid for what we're trying to do and to give you an idea on how to do this in the first place. So escape out of that, and the next thing and the last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to add in some trees. So to add foliage, what we're going to want to do is navigate to the top left of our browser here and click on the Foliage tool. In the Foliage tool, we need to drop in the different foliages that we want to use. The foliages that we're going to use are going to come from the Kite Demo folder. The Kite Demo folder should have been installed when you installed the Paragon starting content stuff. Inside of the Kite Demo folder, click on it and navigate to the Environments tab, followed by Foliage, and we're going to grab a couple of the different foliage items. The first one we're going to grab is the Bog Myrtle Bush 2. So just click that and drag the foliage into the option right here. Now, what you're going to want to do is actually preview each of these in the browser before you do this, otherwise it's probably going to crash your engine. So whichever ones I say to do, click on it and wait for it to compile and compile all the shaders, and then move on to the next one. That way you don't crash your computer. Back in the Foliage tab, navigate on over to the Environments, and then back into the Trees tab. And in the Trees tab, we're going to grab a few different things. First, we're going to grab the Hill Tree Tall, so go ahead and click that and drag that in. We're also going to add the Suits Pine, the smaller version, not the tall version. Now what we need to do is paint these onto the terrain. So to do that, click on the Brush Size Options, and let's just make it pretty big. The density we want very, very small, like literally tiny. And what we're going to do is just go ahead and click and drag all around the area. So like that. Now you can see that's way too dense still, so we're going to go ahead and control Z and get rid of all that, and let's drop the paint density to like 0 0.001. Try that. That looks a little bit better. Now we're getting trees a bit more spread out, finely spread. So let's try 0 0.005. Good, and that sort of starts to look like a forest. As you can see, we've got a pretty nice little forest setup that we're building here. Just go ahead and paint those around the lake, bring them around to the other side of the lake. So it looks like there's something going on over there. Just drag them around. Bring them up the mountain a little bit. Bring it around the lake. And connect it. Now if we go ahead and hit play and drop on into the game, 
you can see we have a forest, we have this open little field land here, we have some bushes and different items all around, and, and it really, really looks like a forest. So that is all we're going to do here. In the next part of the video, we're going to edit the terrain a little bit to make it so you can have some like clear pathing. We'll also start to build a little bit of a city. If you want to go ahead and mess around with the trees a little bit more, play some of the different foliage options that are available, go ahead and do that. We're also going to make it the nighttime in it to get that creepy horror feel. So anyway, guys, I do hope you tune into the next part of the series. If you do like the series, make sure to leave a like. Make sure to subscribe so you know when the next parts of the series come out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.